Right, it has arrived. I saw Johnny Smith and I thought, it's a bit of me that. The world's most pointless radio. Anyone who says don't drive your heroes is talking out of their arse. Well then, I've just had a phone call saying that the driver is 10 minutes away from my house. I've got no idea what I'm calling this video yet, but as you can probably tell, I'm absolutely buzzing. I can't believe that this is happening. He's come from the other end of the country, it's a six hour drive. I've bought it sight unseen, which is a massive no-no in anyone's books, but for reasons that I'll get onto later on in the video, it's not actually as bad as uh, what it sounds like. 10 minutes away, bit of a childhood dream this. So yeah, next time you see me, I'll be unloading the car off the back of a trailer, not in your driveway. Right, it has arrived. It's somewhere at the top of this road. Right, Beth. So yeah, this is the new motor. It's a Lotus Exige S2 and it's been my dream car for the last 20 years. I'll take you around it in a bit more detail later on in the video, but first, let's get behind the wheel because that's what these things are all about, the driving experience. And I haven't actually driven an Exige before, so I hope I like it in a bit. Oh shit. There's no way to make that look graceful, by the way. It's fucking rock solid to get in here. Can't quite believe that I'm sat in one of these. I've wanted one for the best part of 20 years since I saw them on Top Gear. Finally got one, somehow. Still got the truck and I've still got the Mini. One of them is going to have to go. The plan today is to basically just take it for a blast, see what I think of it. I will stop over at some point and show you around it as well because there's not a great deal of things that you can spec on this car, but I'm fairly sure it's got everything. I'll show you maybe what it needs, what it doesn't need, and uh, basically just have a good time. I just fancy going out for a blast, and it's a pretty good excuse to uh, to have one, I think, when you've got a new car, so let's get into it. Just off the bat, driving it as a normal car just through the town, yeah, it's a little bit rattly, and it's not the most comfortable thing, even with these pro-back seats in, which I'll get onto later on, but it's not too bad. It's not heavy on juice, obviously it's very manoeuvrable. You would have thought with something like this, the uh, turning circle would be horrific, but it's actually not that bad. Goes over speed bumps. No bother at all. I haven't caught a single one yet, and our village is full of them. But it is a little bit loud. There's literally zero point in having a radio because you cannot hear it. But I suppose at the end of the day, you don't really want to be listening to the to the radio if you've got the engine right behind your idiot. You want to be listening to that. And even though it's only a 1.8 litre Toyota engine in this still sounds pretty nice, especially when the VVTi kicks in. Oh, the coppers. <laughs> Thought they were stopping me for a second there because my front plate's in the windscreen. Right, this is the first little stretch of road. We can give it a bit of a blast. Bit bumpy around here. Not this bit. But this bit, fucking hell. My word, I'm taking that corner a lot quicker than I can do in the Mini. That is insane. Like I said, the aircon, it does have it, which is an optional extra on these things. Whether or not it works, I don't know. I've heard that the aircon on a Lotus is essentially like having an asthmatic blow at you through a straw, so it's, it's not great. But, See if we'll get everything checked out because it would be nice to go on some road trips in this thing. Let's wind it on. See what it's like. Just hear it when it kicks in that VVTi. You get that extra little surge of power. It's unbelievable. Drop it down a gear. Really got to keep your toe in 
on these because they don't like lift off mid corner. <laughs> You're not getting up that much quicker. Woof. And then you can just pop it into sixth gear, toot along. I'd rather drive this at 50, 60 mile an hour than I would a Hyundai Gets. It's just depressing. Cheers for the comments on the trim, anyway. I saw Johnny Smith and I thought, it's a bit of me that. This is the road, baby. This is the road. Now, hopefully, the sheep don't want to have a game of chicken. Right, let's go from second. What a view! What a car! Anyone who says don't drive your heroes is talking out of their arse. I'm just in the straights here as well, I'm not even <laughs> I'm not going through any turns, which is uh, kind of what this is made for. There's one coming up now. Whether or not I'll be able to take it at full chat, I don't think so. There's a car coming, I'll be sensible. But the level of grip! You don't need a car review on a Lotus. Everybody knows what they're built for, but until you experience one, Jesus, it's insane. You don't realise what speed you're doing until you look down either, because you think, surely not. Surely I can't be doing that around the corner. Wow. Well, I will pull over at the next village, because I want to um, change a few of the GoPros around. And I think when we do that, I'll also uh, give you a little bit of a tour of the Lotus, since it's nice up here at the moment. It's not too hot. It's literally everything that... I expected it to be. Everything I wanted it to be. Unbelievable. There we go. Genuinely blown my mind that I own this thing. It's absolutely stunning from every angle, isn't it? What have we got then? We have the 11th out of the 16 magnetic blue S2 X Sieges with the touring pack from 2005. So it's a bit of a mouthful. I'll take you through all of the history and everything. Um, when I'm back home because there is a folder that is that thick full of everything that you need to know about this car ADOARS tyres on all the way around and they look fairly new as well I think they were put on the car in 2022 um, and it's typical Lotus hasn't really done many miles since from my understanding it has every single option that you could get on one of these things excuse all the recording equipment there is literally nowhere else I can put it carpets they were an optional extra we have air conditioning that one there can you see it yep the world's most pointless radio that was an option probax seats which are <laughs> believe it or not they're the upgraded comfy seats you can see how thin they are but there is actually a decent little bit of padding where you need it even though that still doesn't appear to be a great deal we also have the optional footrest we've got electric windows think the door cards were it was an option to get them wrapped in alcantara you can get an alcantara wrapped uh, center console for whatever reason if you'd want one you can also get traction control which this doesn't have not so sure what the crack was with the earlier cars with traction control if you could get them or if it was only later available on the 2009 models i think but if you're an avid Lotus fan, you might have noticed that the front end is newer than the back end. And yes, there is a reason for that. This is adding off. So this is actually a Cat S, this car. You wouldn't be able to tell if you were just walking past it because it's been repaired to a pretty decent standard by a lad called uh, Matthew Freed. You might have seen him on Instagram. He's Freed Co, I believe. And I bought this car about a week ago. It got transported up here and I haven't had an issue with it since. But yeah, I'll throw the pictures up on screen of what it did look like. It looks a hell of a lot worse than what it actually is because it's basically fiberglass damage. And when fiberglass goes boom, it looks a lot worse than it actually is. Uh, there was nothing wrong with anything underneath the, uh, underneath the fiberglass. It's had a little bit of paint work to the rear quarter and a little bit to the rear clamp, but looks spot on. It's done a fantastic job. I have noticed I'm not sure if this is a thing with all S2s, that when you're sat in traffic for a couple of minutes, the temperature will start to rise. Obviously, it's not getting the airflow through the ducts and into the uh, 
did I say ducts there? Into the ducts, there we go. And into the engine, which is what it needs to cool it down. The radiator being at the front, it's not getting the airflow up and across and into there either to cool it. Um, I have noticed on the S3s, they actually have fans mounted over the top of the radiator. Was that brought in because S2s used to overheat? I don't know. Maybe you can answer that down in the comments. But yeah, looking around the car, there's a few things that need to be done. I've got a seal on the window here, which obviously needs to be uh, adjusted and then re-secured. And then uh, I think someone just called me a knobhead in a Corsa. Nice one. Need to do a bit more polishing on the wing mirror. But the whole car could do with a decent polish. But I'm sure my car cleaning will come in clutch with all the bits that I need for that. And the other thing, which you've probably noticed, is the plate is currently up there. Popular thing to do, I think, with these Lotuses is to, to run a smaller plate on the front with like a three-quarter size one. I don't know if it's something that will get you into bother. Um, I don't really want to get pulled over a lot in this car, so if it means throwing a larger front plate on the front, so be it. But I haven't put that on yet because I wanted to put my private reg on and I'm waiting for the logbook to come back because if you've ever dealt with a Cat S car before, you'll know you have to send off what's called a V62. Um, that basically just is uh, for you to get a new logbook for the car because they destroy the logbook when the car is written off and classed as a Cat S. All the paperwork should be back very soon because I sent it off a couple of days ago. Um, then I can get the private reg on. Then we can get the paint sorted. I have actually bought already, I know, buying bits already for the car, a single DIN radio because this car was made in 2005. Uh, they hadn't even heard of Bluetooth back then. I think it was about 2007 when they first started putting it into cars. So I've ordered a single DIN unit with Android Auto so I can actually put maps and things on there. It has arrived and it doesn't quite fit. So I think what I'm gonna do is modify the uh, the, the stereo that's actually came because it's only a cheap old one rather than chop bits out under the dash for obvious reasons. Why would you chop the car up when you can just alter the radio, right? However, I'm gonna go for a blast now because it's still super nice and uh, the sheep are gonna block me off in a second so I'll best get through those. Right, I'll catch you back in the car. I am so happy that I've managed to get behind the wheel of one of these things, it has exceeded all of my expectations. Just like my other cars, Adrian Flux have been super helpful in getting this thing insured and on the road. They are the biggest specialist motor insurance broker here in the UK and the best part is when you phone them up for a quote, you get put through to an operator who actually knows their stuff, so you're not having to explain to 6 year old Doris what a splitter is. Whether you're insuring a club sport build mini, a K truck or a Lotus Exceed, give them a call and they'll be able to sort you out. From my experience dealing with them, they are super quick to pick up the phones and get you on your way. It took me about 10 minutes to set up my policy on this thing, so if you want to get yourself a quote, I'll bang a link at the top of the description for you to get in touch with them. The issue I have now is that I have three cars. First world problem, I know, but all of them have two seats, so I will have to do something about that because I've got a baby on the way. That means I'll probably have to go car shopping again in the very near future. I've got plenty of Lotus content planned, so if that's your thing, make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss out. It opens up new doors for me and it's free for you, so it's very much appreciated. I'm closing in on the 30k milestone that I set myself to reach by the end of 2024, so help a brother out if you can. And yeah, thanks for watching, especially if you made it this far. Let me know down in the comments what you think of the Lotus, I absolutely love it. But that's it for today, I've been Luckship and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>